Hey guys, Wade here. I'm going to very quickly, or at least attempt to, cover the, what I call, very poor man's power drawbar, which is this guy right here. I want to reiterate, starting out, that a requirement that I had, that I have to mount this guy somewhere in this area right here, uh, as far as the spindle encoder and that will be the feedback loop or my spindle control which will allow me to do rigid tapping so with that providing capability that drove the design of the power draw bar so i basically had what i i call the troika which is in the future i'm looking to do this spindle encoder I wanted to do this power draw bar and then i want to do most likely a motor upgrade and that may require redoing the pulleys for the motor to drive the spindle. That has the biggest question mark as far as a motor replacement, and that is definitely in the future. But if I do that, uh, that would be one system that's designed to incorporate all of these. And so you've seen the traditional, I would say more traditional power draw bar that's got the big air cylinder, whether it's a two chamber or three chamber, resting on aluminum rails and it kind of lifts up and squeezes the Belleville washers. I will have that in the future, but for right now, to get rolling and especially to get this airplane done, I'm going with what, again, I call the really poor man's power draw bar. So I wanted something simple but uh, definitely something that provided quick tool changes. A little bit of history, uh, a few, two or three years ago, there's a couple dudes on YouTube, they uh, go by Physics Anonymous. They came up with a power draw bar based around this guy right here, which is where I got the idea for that very specific butterfly air ratchet. Their power draw bar was designed for a PM25 mil, and then they 3D printed a, a cradle that basically attached to this back wall back here. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. So I, I tried that, I 3D printed that cradle, but again, that was for PM25. I wasn't exactly sure how it was gonna work on this guy, the PM30, but I, I realized that I was gonna have to somehow put this spindle encoder somewhere hanging off the side or on the front or something. So this blue cover had to go, which meant that wasn't gonna work. So then I designed one myself that actually sat on top here and it had two uprights this is actually the spring one of the springs because i ordered the materials are mainly mcmaster car there's you can't see them from the bottom because the holes are just a little bit deeper but there are two bronze oil seal bearings that i stole from that project to mount on the top here for the guides for this rod And then again, I stole that spring from that project. Uh, mainly once I got the PM30, I realized I didn't want to have this blue cover on here so that I could get the encoder on there somewhere. In my mind, that drove a requirement for something that was hanging from the ceiling. And let me show you. This comes all the way down from the double joists. That was when I did the, uh, the roof repair. I had to add in that second brighter joist. So uh, I used that to my advantage. The joists are just off a of hair. There's about... 2.25 inches from this line to the center line of this and then 1.4 inches but still it allowed me enough room to get that right over the spindle and the draw bar. I attached that air ratchet to this down rod. There's two holes. The forward hole has double wire and it goes around the actual aft screws of the uh, air ratchet. So I took the screws out and then just put them back in with the wire attached underneath. And then the aft hole has a zip tie that goes around this extrusion or, or whatever you wanna call it, that's actually part of this physical top that allows for this air uh, connection piece to go in. So that holds it there. Is it the best design? Probably not, but it works. This actually, didn't hang down as far when I tested it out, but one thing I didn't allow for was the weight of this hose attachment. And then the hose actually kind of drives this down just a hair. So I'm watching this right now. I have uh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch, I would say. So far, I haven't had any clearance issues. I'm keeping an eye on that. I also hinged it. So I cut 
right at the top of this line right here so that I can swing the whole assembly forward. You can see there's a little eye right here to attach to this hook to keep this thing up. And that is to get this blue cover on and off and then if I need to swap out the pulleys on the motor. And I'll show you a picture of that right here. I'm not going to break that down here. And then the back side, uh, I actually have two latches. I have those type of pins holding the latches on and that keeps it secure when it's not in the up position. So I know you're probably asking, well, just show us, does it work? And I will show you in a minute because I'm going to have to reposition the camera. So I'm going to get all the information part of this out of the way. This adapter right here, I had to take a 3 8 inch socket to be able to attach it to the 3 8 inch post on this air ratchet. And so I had to cut both of them. I had to weld it to a 12 point socket because that 12 point socket then allows the socket to engage. Uh, and it's a 12 millimeter socket on this 12 millimeter square nut. So that engages just fine. And I'll show you that that right like that I, I may end up putting some bungee cord around here just to help pull that up just a hair but again i'm just tracking it just starting to to use the tools so uh let me reset this camera and then i'll show you the actual operation of this thing kind of hard to get both the, the top side up here and this guy down here so i'm using two very distinct looking tools at least the tool holders i don't have the tool set in here yet so we just pull this down they have to just rock it back and forth just to here to get it to seat, but it's not bad at all. We take the tool, set it up in there, and it's in there. Now see, this kind of sticks a little bit. Like I said, I'm probably going to pull some bungee to make sure that doesn't stay engaged when I uh, come away from it. So you can see, now, if I had that tool in there, and I have this bit holder here, so I'm just going to do a swap and I'm going to do it casually. I'm not going to try to race or anything. I don't want to damage anything, but you can see that even just going casually, it should be fairly quick. That was even a bit too far. So I kind of went too much on that. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to put a bungee on there because it keeps kind of wanting to stay on there. But you can see here, let me swap them again, if I can improve my performance. Much better. There you go. And snap. Yeah, probably going to put some bungee on there on the top. So there you have it. Now, one other thing that I'll show you is I went ahead and made up the tool holder holders as far as the, the Tormac TTS tool holders. So I have... Uh, two on this side, as you can see, uh, with 10 positions. Over on this side, I have two, again, as you can see, with eight tool holder positions. Then over here on the computer podium, or I should say in the computer podium, these are for my non-operational slash test tool holder. So you can see this is tool zero, and uh, I'm following Acorn's guidance and making this the longest tool in the bunch at least it should be so there you have it i had some leftover 3 8 inch stainless steel so i went ahead and uh, put it on the lathe made a tip on there um, so yeah this is uh should be the longest tool in the bunch and then of course the kp3 kinematic touch probe so i'm putting that in the very back corner of course to make sure it's protected i will put the case cover back on it uh, once the video's over and then I'll probably 3D print a cover that slides down as a cap over the top of that. Acorn wants this to be tool number 10 so I put it as tool number 10. Okay just a real quick addendum I did add this bungee cord right here what I noted though is that the bungee cord although it helped pull this up it canted this rod and it was still making this bind a little bit, so it was sticking down. So I did a little bit more investigation, and I found that the spring compression really wasn't that great. It wasn't like I initially measured it. So I made up this half-inch spacer right here out of some uh, spare stock round uh, 6061. 
So, like I said, it's about a half an inch. So there's a lot more spring tension right now. So this thing right here, it's a little bit more pressure to get it on down here on this thing and lined up, but then it's firing up. I don't know if you saw that. Maybe I need a wider angle view. But yeah, it's popping right up. So that's what I wanted. And uh, so it looks like that problem is resolved. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.